All right, joining me now here on the Matthew Filipovich Show is former Congressman Alan Grayson. Um, at the moment, I say former congressman, uh, but I'm hoping and thinking that's actually not going to be for long because uh, Congressman Grayson is, in fact, running again in Florida's 8th Congressional District. Uh, you can find out more about his campaign and actually help the campaign at congressmanwithguts.com. Uh, congressman Grayson, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks. Uh, it's good to be here. I'm actually running for the new district that's going to be in downtown Orlando. The lines haven't been set yet, but Florida's gaining two seats because of the census. We're going from 25 seats to 27. One of them's going to be in the Orlando area. That's the one I'm running for. Okay. Is it, is it still going to be, do you think it's still going to be the same kind of uh, district? Is it still going to be a heavily red district that you're in, do you think? No, I don't think so. I think uh, that the, uh, there's two things that are going to uh, tie the Republicans' hands when they try to extend the gerrymandering that they've done for years and years now. My district that I won in was a district that Republicans have won for 34 years straight, largely right. because of gerrymandering. I was the first Democrat to win since Watergate. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was a difficult district to hold, particularly in a year like last year when 63, uh, it was the worst year for Democrats in over a century in the House. We lost 63 seats mm -hmm. in one election. So that district uh, is a district that is so heavily gerrymandered that it runs 140 miles off to the northwest just to try to sweep in every Republican vote they could possibly find, all the way into horse country beyond Ocala, uh -huh. which is uh, quite a distance from Orlando. Right. And I, you know, I tried my best to represent everybody in the district. We opened up four different offices to make sure that people knew we were close by and that we could help. But yeah. that's not the, the, way, the ideal way to represent people. In Florida, we passed a constitutional amendment called Fair Districts Florida, which says, establishes legal standards uh, that tries to minimize the gerrymandering or even eliminate it and mm -hmm. says that you have to respect political and natural boundaries. You have to make the districts compact and so on. Now, Orange County, which is the county that Orlando's located in that I live in, Orange County has almost 100,000 more Democrats than Republicans. Mm -hmm. And despite that, because of the gerrymandering, they've managed to create a situation where virtually all of the congressmen from Central Florida are Republicans. I mean, in yeah. Florida as a whole, we have 25 congressional seats. We have yeah. 600,000 more Democrats than Republicans registered to vote in Florida. And mm -hmm. we have 19 Republican congressmen and six Democratic congressmen. It's they unbelievable. They have taken every, uh, they, they sometimes actually go house by house to take every Democrat they possibly can and stuff them into these six Democratic districts uh -huh. while they leave the other 19 for, with Republican advantages all over the state. And yeah. that's how they do it. Now, Fair District Florida is going to make that very difficult. The fact that Orlando now has so many more Democrats than Republicans will make it very difficult. What I'm expecting is that we'll see at least one solidly Democratic district here in Orlando, and that's the district that I'm running for. That's Excellent. the new district. Nice. Uh, well, I'm actually, uh, Congressman, I'm really happy to have you here because um, you're someone who has outed himself as a proud progressive and a liberal. Uh, and again, that's that's actually shockingly rare in D.C. And we have a we're in an age where we have you know a Democratic president and a majority of the Democrats in the Congress. There are obviously exceptions to that uh, that have seemed to embrace a right wing agenda. And I guess my qu my first question for you really here is someone who's actually who's served there, is there, as someone who's been there, is there any hope of pushing them to the left, or are they far gone now? Well, I think, I think there's a lot of hope. Uh, I mean, all we need to do is basically organize our party mm -hmm. and then wait for our party to have uh, power. I, I mean, the, honestly, the, the Tea Party has given um, a template uh, for mm -hmm. how to accomplish that without their you know, being drenched in irrationality. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, and mysticism the way that they are. Um, they, the Tea Party has ruthlessly excluded from uh, the Republican Party through the nomination process, through primaries and so on, anybody who doesn't meet their ideological criteria. In other mm -hmm. words, anybody who has a direct atta attachment to reality. Uh, <laughs> they, 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 they have, I mean, it's gotten to the point now where people expected that even Orrin Hatch wouldn't be considered conservative enough for the Republican Party. People thought that Jason Chaffetz, a House member, was going to take away his seat. Now Chaffetz is telling people he's not going to run, but it's not because Chaffetz can't win. Yeah. Uh, Chaffetz is to the right of, of Hatch, and these days the, the whichever candidate uh, is furthest to the right in the Republican Party is generally the one that gets the nomination. 
Uh, we don't have anything like that on our side, but, um, you know, it, it, I think our people on our side are starting to learn the, the benefit of uh, organizing for specific goals. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know, the, I, I, said, <laughs> I said on MSNBC last month that the real two-party system in America today is the meanies and the weenies. <laughs> the, the meanies want to take away our Social Security, our Medicare, and our Medicaid, and the weenies want to compromise with them. Right. That, that that doesn't make any sense to most people. That's why you see Congress being held in such disrepute, and frankly, why you see the president's uh, approval ratings below fifty percent.